Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner and joining me today is Tony Lacasi, and he's a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club and a fellow Benton County Master Gardener and he's going to be sharing his knowledge with us. Uh, today we're going to be talking about getting a head start in your garden by starting seeds indoors. So that's going to be a good topic to get started for the year. Okay. And we'll also be come, talking about upcoming events and some things you need to do in your garden for March. March starts off the gardening year. So we're going to have to start getting busy. Okay. In the meantime, we do have a new background. Um, the daffodils back here are Bella Vista daffodils, and that's Tony's um, main project he did years ago. and still doing. Still doing. And uh, we have Bella Vista daffodils planted all over the, the city, and um, we can, we're going to probably order more again this fall. We will be ordering more this fall. So you can add these to your garden. Mine are only up a few inches, but um, they'll be blooming in March. Yep. Yeah. There's several hundred different cultivars of daffodils yeah. with a lot of different romantic names, but this particular daffodil is known worldwide as the Bella Vista daffodil. Yeah, that's why it's so special. Exactly. And March is also the time, uh, well, it's St. Patrick's Day in March, and we usually had our um, Bella Vista uh, club um, card party benefit, yep. but that's going to be canceled again because of the shutdown and the virus, so hopefully next year we'll be able to um, uh, get back to our normal schedules. And uh, mark, you have to mark your calendar, the spring plant sales. Um, we're going to have one on April 16th and 17th for the coleus and tomatoes. That's the Bella Vista Garden Club at the Wastewater. And then again on May 20th and tw through the 22nd, that's when we're going to have the majority of our plants. We have a lot of plants uh, yeah. ready. Yeah, I've been I've been down there, and, and it's just uh, wonderful. Yeah, she's really got it loaded, <laughs> and, and I know there's that much more still coming. Oh, so yeah. it's going to be a big selection. Yeah, it's plant shrubs, yeah. perennials, yeah, bulbs, you, you, you name, name it. it. Yep. We're going to have yep. it. Okay, and also the Benton County Master Gardeners will hold their plant sale and expo on May 14th and 15th. Um, they don't know the quite the. Uh, location yet they're looking at different locations but put it on your calendar and we'll have more next month so that's always a good sale too so but today we're going to talk about um, starting seeds uh, and so getting a head start in your garden yep. and there's several things you have to think about yep. As soil temperature moisture light seed starting mix seed to soil contact and air movement so the ideal soil, te soil temperature range can usually be found on the packets. I don't have a packet with me, but the little seed packets, sometimes they'll have the, the range of temperature of the soil that's yeah, necessary. Yeah, there's a lot of information on those packets. It's very yeah, you wanna, important. You want to save Very them. important to read the back of the packet right. uh, before you start. Yes, <laughs> yes because it'll uh, tell you the depth of the, that's, exactly. you know, how deep, but anyway. Um, and the moisture, you need to soak that, uh, that yep. soil before you put it in your little yep. containers. You have to really mix it in a bowl or in a bucket or something because it's hard to get that, that soil moist enough. So. And um, the light, you need light to get these, once they, they right. break ground, um, you need light 12 to 14 hours a day. Yep. So, and grow lights are good. Okay, and then the seal starting mix, um, seed starting. There's a lot of different varieties and different brands. A lot of you know, we're some are about that. better than others, and yes. Tony's going to talk yeah. about that. Yep. Um, but there's just a lot of um, different brands, and then you have to have that seed to soil contact. So that seed has to really be in contact with the soil, and we've got some tips about that too. And then air movement, it's important. I didn't realize that air movement is so important because outside, when you plant seeds outside, you know, they're used to that air movement. And I think that helps with, um, with the um, problem of damping off. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, if there's air movement, you don't get that bacteria buildup. So, right. Yeah. So Tony, um, and timing of the seeds is important. So you not you need to know when the frost date is. Our frost date, what is April tenth, I believe. Our late, last frost date yep. usually is. It can be later. Well, generally, uh, 
the fruit bearing time uh, or the flowering time of the plant is going to pretty much dictate when it needs to go in the ground and mm -hmm. when it's going to go in the ground pretty much dictates when the seed has to be started. Right. So you, you sort of work backward from when, when, when does that particular plant produce the fruit or mm -hmm. the flower mm -hmm. and then work backwards from it usually six to eight weeks to right. seed planting. You know. Right. And your packet will tell you too. Yeah, that'll it's, tell it's you on too. on your packet. Um, so um, we have some samples um, that you're going to show us how to actually yeah, just some pot. Just little simple tips that okay. take, sort of take the mystery out of yeah. <laughs> seed starting. So you want to start your demo? Sure. And then uh, I've got, I also have some seeds I started yeah, to show Yeah, we're going to we'll show them that too. A little show and uh, tell. A couple of things. I'm going to step down here to my little table show you some things you can do. Uh, you know, with spring starting, all the nurseries are starting to get in a ton of plants. And uh, keep in mind that for about uh, $3.75, if you start it from seeds, you can get about 100 zinnia plants. Mm -hmm. Try doing that at, at a nursery. Yeah. And uh, for about the same price, for three, four, five dollars you can get about 40 tomato plants. So there is some economy to start in your own seeds, plus the success. Um, Container-wise, you know, you can start with something as simple as a styrofoam cup. Make sure you put holes in the bottom. You can use that. And you can use something as simple as an egg carton, again, with holes in the bottom. Yeah, and those, those yeah. egg cartons that are more of um, yep. and then there's cardboard the, are there's better. There's the cardboard ones also. They're good. The only problem with that, them is the, when the wet, they start breaking down do and getting kind of loose. But they do work. Yeah. Uh, I, this is what I use because I do quite a few seeds. I use a tray with six of these little six packs in it. And like Jerry said before, you want a good potty mix. This particular seed starting mix is pretty general at most box stores yeah. and I did find yesterday I finally found out after living here 13 years from the producer that probably starts more plants from seeds than anybody in northwest Arkansas what they use I found out yesterday who is that <laughs> huh you want me to say put it on air well I'll do it <laughs> Is and it so, Matkins or is it? Yeah, it's, it's at Matkins and it's Burger Seed Starting Mix. Uh -huh. B-E-R-G-E-R. -E that's all they use 100%. Mm. Well, there's so, also Jiffy and then there's Miracle yep, Grow. Yeah, this is Jiffy. There's yeah. Miracle Grow. There's uh, Happy I had, Frog. I didn't think I had um, Fox Farm. I've tried several. They mm. all work. Some work mm -hmm. better than others. And then there's a lot of other little tricks that when you go to YouTube, you'll find... Uh, when I put my, uh, my uh, mix in the container, I tap it down pretty good, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then once I fill these trays, then I, I drown it, okay, and then just let it. When the water stops running out of it, it's good and wet. Then the next thing you want to do is, like we said before, read the seed packet, right. you know, and... Uh, some of those seeds are really, 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 really tiny. And you know, Tony, what I did on mine is I took a... A, a little piece the, of paper. No, I took the a oh. one-ply, this is two-ply. I took a, a one-ply uh, of a the toilet, toilet paper, paper. Yep. and I cut the little, you know, thing out. And when you set that on the soil, you can see exactly where your seeds are, mm. but when you put them on the soil, they're hard to see. Yeah. So well, that's what I did. That's a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do that when I put seeds in the garden where I've got a, a big row. I do it on a long strip of paper, mm -hmm. and I can see the seeds on there, and I lay the strip down in the soil. And, and they'll the, still come through then that. The paper, then the paper decomposes. Yeah. Uh, but with a lot of those little bitty seeds, I use a jeweler's tweezers. The dental industry has a lot of little tools that are really nice, too, that you can pick up in thrift stores and antique, you know, junky antique stores and yeah. places like that. Uh, but that comes in real handy for picking up very tiny little seeds and then putting them at the correct depth. 
you'll find that the smaller the seed, the shallower they go, the bigger the seed, the deeper they go. Yeah. But again, read the back of the packet. Now, there's some seeds, don't you have to stratify or something? They're larger yeah, seeds. You uh, have to kind of some cut seeds them or sand you them. do. Uh, and some people st stratify all their seeds. Mm. Some people do some. Uh, uh, I haven't d done really any, and I haven't had any mm. bad luck. I but, think like the four, um, but the, uh, you can uh, soak your seeds. Some I've known people to soak them for an hour. Some people mm -hmm. soak them in water for overnight. The package usually tells you uh, what's best. Yeah, though. but uh, again, read the back of the packet. Mm -hmm. Then once it's in there, you're going to want to label it, and you can use something like throw away uh, from the fast food places, uh, things like that. You can use old Venetian blinds that have been cut up. Uh, you can buy plastic ones and I use these little wooden ones and I print a label and, and I put for my labeling gun, I put it on there and I drive it in there like that. Uh, then you're going to want to, um, like Jerry said, it's going to, you, so you're going to want a sunny window or if you do a grow light you're going to want your grow light two to three inches above it. You want to keep your temperature in that 60 to 80 degree range. Most seeds are going to germinate six to eight weeks. Um, mine are in a little greenhouse, and so to uh, if I water them, sometimes I have a tendency to overwater them, even with a small watering can. So mm -hmm. I, I have found that uh, just misting them like this with a simple little container like that, I can keep that surface, and I do it usually two to three times a day, but from seven at night to seven in the morning, you know, I'm going night-night. So, uh, if you're going to be away from it for a long time, you're worried about that getting, you don't want it to dry on top, you can, on containers like this, and like the egg carton, you can use saran wrap, I use these plastic sheets like this, and I you know, I give it a good, nice little misting, and I tuck it in, and then, uh, and it holds in the heat as well, holds in the moisture till I can get to it the next morning. I right. usually go in in the morning, take that off, feel it, and usually feels uh, pretty good, and then I monitor it throughout the day. Um, and then you're going to want to, the first leaf that's going to come up is, yeah, what, do we, is what do we call that little leaf? Um, it's uh uh, col collodial or colladial or Kaledon, Kaledon. Kaledons. The first These little the... leaf that's going to come up yeah. is going to fall away yeah. after a while, and then after don't get don't panic when it turns yellow and falls away, because the the real leaves of the plant are the next two that emerge. Mm -hmm. Once those two uh, emerge, you can start a light fertilization of a liquid fertilizer. Uh, once once a week at half at half dosage okay now if you want let's say this is a tomato plant you can take it out of this container or this one or this one whatever little container you're in and move it to more like a little four inch pot so it can get a little bit bigger before you know you move it to the garden mm -hmm. uh, now these are the ones I started. Yeah, um, Jerry started these. Let me show you these little guys. These are zinnias. Yeah, well, they're zinnias and and uh, they're zinnias and lettuce. And I oh. marked. I actually marked the the uh, yeah. container what they are. Yeah. And the date I planted them. So you can see what what she has here in styrofoam cups. I see she's got them sitting in water. So they're taking they're up the water. water from the bottom. Right. And so that's if you mist another... them now, they're going to get a little too wet. I think the plants will get a little too wet. Right. And then uh, in the greenhouse, they dry out faster. Yeah, they dry out real fast in the but greenhouse. But in the house. Some people will put water in the tray mm -hmm. and then set their container in the tray and let it take it up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, I sometimes worry about them getting too, too wet and then it getting moldy on top, so I like to just keep them damp and not mm -hmm. wet until they go. And um, then once you transfer them to a little larger container before they go to the ground, you want to start hardening them off. And when the weather's nice, take them out of your house, take them out of your greenhouse, wherever, away from that sunny window. Set them outside for the prettiest part of the day, then bring them back in 
at night for about a week or so. And then when, once you get them in the garden, then you can start a regular fertilization program uh, after that. So, uh, like I say, it's, uh, there's no big mystery. There's, uh, it's kind of like chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> There's, there's a million recipes, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, don't don't uh, be intimidated by it. Uh, experiment with it, have fun with it, and uh, and happy gardening. Yeah, because uh, when they are first, when you first plant them, they really don't need the light at first. Because I have uh, in-floor heat. Yeah. So I I planted them and then I set them on uh, the tile floor right. in the dark. Right. And as long as they have that heat, you know, then once they started germinate, to germinate, um, then I would move them into the light. Yeah. But the, the light is important. Once they pop out of the soil, they need light. Yep. Yep. And that hardening off, I think they said start with an hour a day and then maybe two hours and yeah. get them gradually used to the, yeah. the environment my, they're going to be in. In my greenhouse, my heaters are down on the floor. Right. And so the heat rises mm -hmm. up through it. Then at night, the plastic is catching the heat right. too and trapping it yeah. in there. And, and depends, then when the sun comes out, like this morning, the first really hour warm. and a half after sunrise, the temperature rose 30 degrees yeah. just that fast. Yeah, greenhouse makes a big difference. Yeah, as soon as that so. sun hits it, it's and then, a lot like of light. I said, the lights, you're gonna have to, I'm going to have to put some uh, grow lights or some light about two or three inches above these because they're getting a little bit leggy. Yep. So You can take it from from like Jerry's down there with a with a with a, a tray that you got at mm -hmm. at the at at Target or somewhere or Walmart or the dollar store and, and the dollar store <laughs> yeah. and and styrofoam cups, or you can go with uh, there's some of, there's a lot of different trays on the market once right. you go on the internet there's racks with grow lights I mean oh, yeah. you can start hundreds of plants uh, in your crawl space yeah, uh, with flor fluorescent uh, grow lights mm -hmm. so. It's what level you want to take it to, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a lot of fun. You can save a lot of money, and there's a lot of reward to putting a little bitty seed in some soil. Right. And in the middle of summer, yeah. you have a four foot by four foot with leaves this big around and big giant mm -hmm. yellow blooms on it mm -hmm. that make wonderful zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So have fun with it. And you really get, there's more varieties because I bought a... Um, that's another Pack thing. It. The zinnias, they're called candy cane or something, and they have beautiful stripes on them. Well, I never saw zinnias like that in the, you know, in the nursery. So you can, you can get some really unusual plants that you can't find in the nursery. Exactly. And, uh, and well, also the and, normal plants that you I see. Found, I've learned through the years that a lot of the nurseries, the stock that they get, they're sort of at the mercy of the growers. Right. And that sometimes the nurseries themselves don't know what's going to show up uh, uh, until the, they unload the truck. Right. <laughs> uh, but when you buy from catalogs, uh, you can find some really unusual and, and unique and exotic things. Mm -hmm. There are seed companies, that, for example, that sell only Italian vegetables. Only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there are heir heirloom seed companies that sell only American heirloom seedlings. Uh, there are companies that sell only pure organic, uh, uh, no GMO, on and on and on mm -hmm. seedlings. So you can really get selective where it's, that would be very difficult to do sometimes from a store. So if you're looking for a really exotic, I found a fabulous cooking tomato finally mm -hmm. after... 13 years of searching, <laughs> right. you know, and it made uh, one winter day this past winter. My wife and I got in there, and four hours later, we had the most fabulous uh, Sicilian-style tomato sauce you've ever put in your mouth. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> but we did it the old-fashioned way, mm -hmm. and uh, it was just incredible because it was the, you know, uh, a tomato that's famous for that uh, uh, near uh, Naples in the San Maranzaro uh, area mm -hmm. of, uh, of Italy. So yeah, that's no end to what you can grow. There's no actually, end to what yeah. you can go by, by yeah. starting your own seeds. So yeah. like I said, don't Keep be it. intimidated. Have fun with it. Experiment with it. And Give it find, a try. Find what works best for you. Yeah. Give it a try. And, and don't be discouraged if you have some failures. Everybody has failures now and then, so right. keep, uh, keep oh at yeah. it. Oh, yeah, if you haven't failed, you haven't gardened. That's right, <laughs> that's right. And I think the gardening in March, uh, 
the biggest question we're getting is what are we what about this terrible winter we've had and this awful cold temperatures and I think uh, Janet Carson had a column on it yeah, I get a lot of calls. Oh, that's the main question. <laughs> what do we do? Do we go out and trim all this dead stuff out? What do we yeah. do? Or is everything dead, yeah. you know? Don't panic. Wait. Wait, wait. wait, wait. Don't start cutting things down. Wait yeah. until they start leafing out mm -hmm. and then be very careful and only take out what you right. know is dead wood. This is the coldest winter. We've been here 27 years. I've never seen a winter this cold for so long and so cold. And actually, I'm from St. Louis, and I've never seen in St. Louis a week of such cold, cold weather. So about 10 or 11 years ago, I think we lost a lot of Nandinas mm -hmm. because it was so cold. And it could happen yeah, again. And Your Nandinas may too. look just yeah. awful for a but long time. But what I found is, uh, and what I've noticed already on the Nandinas, the bamboo Nandinas, like heavenly bamboo, mm -hmm. whether they're the standard size or the dwarfs, seemed like they got hit really hard. Yes, they did. And they may have to be cut down all the way to the ground. And just they'll have, come back. Well, they'll come back. They'll come back. We'll have to wait and see. But it could okay. be a pretty devastating spring But if part. you do have just a few stalks that are dead, take mm -hmm. the stalk all the way down as low as you can get and cut it and leave the ones that are good. That's yeah. that thing. But I have seen the Nandina, the, that thicker leaf, ruffle leaf one that is redder, has mm -hmm. the redder foliage to it, not right. that pointed bamboo style Nandina. Yeah. They seem to have handled the the cold a lot a better. better. It depends you know? on the variety. Yeah. yeah. It so it depends on yeah. the different cultivar you have and how well it's yeah. going to handle it. So but just don't do any trimming, any serious trimming until yeah. you know. Yeah. We don't. know what's going to happen. Exactly. So hold Not, off on that. You know, so don't don't get all panicky. Yeah. Wait till mid-April. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so at least. Yeah. And then if you do have oh the other thing if you have seeds that are older. You know, sometimes you have a seed that's two or three years old. They could still germinate. Sure. Um, but you may have to just sell them a little, a little thicker. Yeah, that's another thing know. I failed to mention. Yeah. Usually, I'll put in one of those sections. I'll put two seeds, sometimes three. Uh huh. And then you see what germinates first, or which one once they get up an inch or two mm -hmm. high, which one looks the healthiest, mm -hmm. and I just snip off the other two. So I end up with just the one plant per in the container. Yeah. So. Yeah. Get the healthy ones. Right. Okay. But you need to start out cleaning out your beds um, and do any um, clipping you missed for the fall. But um, you just need to start cleaning up the beds yep. in mid and mid March. The soil. And the bulbs, um, we, you can plant the gladiola bulbs about two week intervals, and then your your um, flowers will be a, great idea. a longer range. You know. Yep. And don't forget, if you plant the daffodils, don't forget to leave the foliage on the plant for six to eight weeks. That's right. what feeds the bulb for the flower next year. So if you cut that foliage off when that after it, the bloom stops, you're not going to have a flower next year. Yep. Now on the so. gladiolus, too, when you put the gladiola bulb in, you better put a stake yes. right, right there alongside it, too, because as it comes up, you're going to gonna need that stake. Yeah, you forget to, where you plant them yeah, sometimes. And, well, you won't forget where you planted it. And, and you need a stake there. And you'll need it because once it blooms, it's going to have a tendency to fall over. Yeah, they need to be staked usually. Yep. So... Um, and then house plants. So you don't. You really can't bring your house plants in until that that evening temperature. That nighttime temperature is at least 50 degrees. Right. People want to keep bringing out their tropicals early, and it's not just not safe. Nope. So just be careful of that. And lawns. You need to apply um, a pre-emergent. Yeah, good time now. Okay. And what do you use for pre-emergent? Well, you know, I'm a I'm a do it natural guy. Right. So <laughs> we all hope to be. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I use uh, the um, I'm having a senior moment here, oh. the the cornmeal. Corn meal. Yeah. Yeah. So just a light dressing of cornmeal. Well, well the I'm, again, I'm, it's not coming to. I'm sorry. I apologize <laughs> yeah. for that. But there's a there is a uh, particular type of cornmeal that okay. is for prevents seed germination okay. so the weed seeds don't germinate. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And then you, you get that down by like March 15th or so? Uh, yeah, the only I've only found it uh, here at Bedford's and at uh, Nitron and Johnson. Okay. Uh, We're just having a hard time getting uh, nurseries to handle a lot of the, the uh, organic yeah. materials, you know. So yeah. hopefully we'll talk them into 
carrying more of these little organics. Little by little by little. Yeah, we'll keep working on them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you can start dividing once the weather does warm up. It's just too cold right now, but once the weather warms up, you can start dividing your perennials and, uh, yep. and your, uh, your, your spring. Yeah. You know, yep. things that come with hostas and so forth. Yep. So. And then uh, you can fertilize your um, peonies and your wisteria, and you can fertilize your azaleas, at, you know, right after they bloom. Right after they bloom. Right after they bloom. Yeah, you want so. a high phosphorus number, the, mm -hmm. which is the middle number. Yeah, for the bloom. Yeah. Now, roses, um, have you pruned your, pruned your roses No, yet? not this year. Okay. Because of the winter that we have that yeah. you were talking about. Normally, I start pruning my roses about the middle of February. Uh -huh. But I'm holding off. I'm waiting to see the little sign of bud growth, mm -hmm. just that first little swell, and that's when I do it. Not the leaf growth. No, 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 the no. Bud just the, the just the swell of the bud on the stem. Okay. Once I see that, I know that if I don't get to it quick, I'm gonna have, and I don't want it to go to leaf yet. Yeah. I want to beat the leaf. Yeah. And my rule of thumb on on roses is. I take mine down 50%. So mm -hmm. every, there's roses in every height that you can think yeah. of, from six inches tall to six feet tall. So I take mine down 50% mm -hmm. uh, of what it is, and I just mark a stick at what 50% is, and I just stand the stick up yeah. in the middle of the shrub, cut it off like mm -hmm. a marine haircut, and then I look down, take out everything facing the center, mm -hmm. and then I take out all the dead wood, and then mm -hmm. I make sure everything around the bud it's union is up. clean so the yeah. bud union is exposed and not covered up with mulch yeah. give it a good fertilization mm -hmm. and i've had good but luck but climbers you can't trim no yet. you're right climbers you want to trim after the first big flush of blooms mm -hmm. so after they've done that first big blooming in the spring as soon as that they they start dying off and falling mm -hmm. to the ground that's when you want to go in and take those old canes right. out Okay, so vegetables, you can't plant your vegetables yet. It's just nope, too well, soon. a little too early. And then trees and shrubs, just keep monitoring the water and make sure there's enough water out there when the early spring. Yep. And then while you're looking for uh, information on gardening information, uh, the um, Master Gardeners have a good website with a lot of information. It's bentoncountygardening.org. And, of course, the Garden Club has a wonderful website yep. with a lot of information. Yep. And that's bellavistagardenclub.com. It's yep. real easy. And um, the program we're having for the Garden Club meeting, it's going to be um, a Zoom meeting. It's going to be on the 24th of March. And we're not sure what the program is going to oh, be. I was just going to ask you that. Yeah, because <laughs> um, we had a program set up, but I'm not sure if that's a Zoom, um, if the presenter is, is comfortable with doing a Zoom. So we'll just have to see. Right. But it's always an interesting program. Yeah, I like the one on water gardens l that was last very month. Good. That was really good. It's very good. And then um, if you want more information, we're going to keep updating the, the website to let you know what's going right. on. So, And I thank you, Tony, for joining me today. Yeah, it was it's always, all it's always fun, Jerry. Great information. And, and this is a whole new world of um, starting seeds if you haven't tried it. It's yeah. really fun. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, you know, start start small, like and just like you, Jerry did. Start with some styrofoam yeah. cups yeah. and a and a plastic the only pan good, from the dollar store, and that's the only get good. Get a pack of seeds for two dollars and seventy five cents, and and experiment. What that, I mean, what can you lose? That's the only good <laughs> use for a styrofoam cup. <laughs> but when you can, when you get a package of zinnias, and you and then mm -hmm. you take them, and you once you have the plants, and you start taking those plants, and and putting them in all the little empty spots in your garden yeah. all throughout the, the garden and and it's July and August and every, yeah. nothing else is blooming yeah. but you got that sea of color out there with those nice big gorgeous flowers you'll be glad you did it. Yeah it's a, from that tiny tiny seed. From that tiny mm -hmm. tiny seed. Okay well I hope you've enjoyed the show and will join us again next month until then don't forget to stop and smell the roses. And feed the birds. And feed the birds. <laughs>